So in this video, we're going to talk about using a super simple UI toolkit called Shoes to create a very simple application on elementary OS. Shoes is a really interesting UI toolkit for Ruby, and it's built specifically to make creating applications as absolutely simple as possible. It's been around for about 10 years, and it's evolved a lot. In fact, the original version of Shoes was implemented in C, and it didn't really age well. There ended up being a bunch of forks of Shoes, like Purple Shoes, Blue Shoes, and Green Shoes. But for this video, we're going to be using Shoes version 3.3 Walkabout because it's the easiest to get your hands on. You don't even need to install Ruby to use it. Both Shoes and Green Shoes use GTK, and the code that we're going to write in this video can be used in either package. The version of Shoes we're going to use in this video is really good for prototyping, but I wouldn't use it to write like a serious application because it has some problems. If you want to write a serious application with Shoes, I recommend using Green Shoes or Shoes 4, but to do that you'll have to install some Ruby dependencies, and that's outside the scope of this video. So we're just going to use the normal prepackaged version of Shoes. So let's get ourselves a pair of shoes! In your browser, just search for Shoes RB, or just go to ShoesRB.com. When you're there, go to the download section and download Shoes 3.3.3 for Linux, 64, or 32-bit. It'll download this .install file that you run. Yep, it is that old school that you download an installer from the website to install it. Once you've got the install file downloaded, schmod it and execute it. Now one thing that's weird about the installer is that it doesn't add shoes to your path, so you'll need to do that by hand. I'm just going to use an alias here because I'm lazy. Shoes also comes with this weird UI thing, but I don't recommend using it because it's super janky. So yeah, once you add shoes to your path, you can use it to start running applications. So like I said in the beginning of this video, Shoes is a UI toolkit for Ruby. So if Ruby isn't your thing, then you probably don't want to be trying to write applications with Shoes. So that being said, let's go ahead and open up Scratch and get it ready. Now before I start coding, I like to make some changes to Scratch because the defaults kind of suck. We always want automatic indentation and your tab width should never be 4, it should only ever be 2. We also want to highlight the current line and show line numbers. Alright, Scratch is ready for development. So let's finally start writing some code. You'll start out by writing capital shoes dot app followed by do and an end at the bottom. Oh yeah, and in Scratch, make sure that you've saved a new file with the extension dot rb so you get syntax highlighting. And if you don't like do and end, you can use curly braces, but that's not very Ruby-ish. So because we're running shoes standalone and we're not using a gem like green shoes, you don't need to require anything if you're familiar with Ruby. Everything inside the do block will appear in your application, so we'll go ahead and put a background in there. Shoes treats backgrounds like an array, so you can do color, dot, dot, another color, and it will kind of cascade it like this. It's pretty cool. Now, Shoes obviously doesn't use markup or HTML to organize things on the page. Instead, it uses these objects called stack and flow. Here, we're going to create a stack and put some buttons in there. And you can use the margin attribute to kind of push the buttons over so they're not right up against the side of the window. Now you can see from the way the code is written that Shoes is designed to be as fluent as possible. You want to change the background? You just call background. You want to create a button? You just call button. None of this gtk.button.bullshit. It's just button and background and some other very primitive things. It's designed to make UI development as easy and accessible as possible. Now if you want your buttons to actually do something, then you give your button a do block. So for example, I've created a flow object and I've put a button inside of it, and with the button I've put a do block with an alert, so when I click the button it's going to pop up this alert. Now here you can see the difference in the UI between a stack and a flow. Stack is vertical and flow is horizontal. See, it's pretty simple stuff. Alright, now that we got the basics out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and prototype an idea that I had for an application right here in a video. So, right off the bat, I want DOSBox because my prototype application is going to be a sort of application or game launcher. So, I'm going to use this other example program I wrote as a template for my prototype. You can see that I'm using stack, and the first element in the stack is a para, which stands for paragraph. I'm going to use a flow for my buttons because I think flows generally look better than stacks for buttons unless you have a reason to use a stack. I've got a button titled launch app, and when you click the button, it's going to call the system command DOSBox. Now I want it so when we launch DOSBox, it launches it as full screen, so we'll go ahead and pass the full screen parameter to DOSBox when we launch it, and now we have full screen DOSBox. Now let's give the app some meat and have it actually launch a game. We'll use good old Commander Keen as an example. Now because I'm trying to make the app as absolutely simple as possible, I'm going to hard code the absolute path to the executable. 
Now, obviously, if I wanted this to be a more serious application to scale, we wouldn't be hard coding anything. It'd be parameterized, or you could pass it in from the UI or something. But for here, I'm just going to hard code it. So now that DOSBox knows the path to the executable, we can push the button and have it launch our game. So in eight lines of Ruby or 10 if you include the commented out background and the extra white space at the bottom, we've created a application that acts as a game launcher that can launch a game from DOSBox. And that's the power of shoes. You can write a fairly substantial application without writing a whole lot of code. And because the API is so fluent, you don't really need to know Ruby all that well to write something like this. Now as fun and powerful as Shoes is, I wouldn't recommend it for folks who want to write or distribute a serious application. Green Shoes specifically is still based on GTK2, and I don't think it's been updated in a long time. The latest version of Shoes is Shoes 4, and it's implemented in JRuby, and it takes some know-how to set up. Ubuntu and Elementary OS don't come with the latest version of JRuby, let alone the latest versions of Ruby development tools, so you have to go to GitHub and install some of it by hand. And while if you like Ruby, it's fun to do, I wouldn't recommend it for folks who want to just simply write and distribute a UI application. But if you are interested in learning about UI development or Ruby in general, Shoes is a good place to start. I think that's going to wrap this video up, though. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and if you did, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.